Good day folks and welcome back. And uh, before you get discouraged by the title and think, petting your horse? How hard could that be? That's a bunch of nonsense, stupid topic. I don't need to watch this, but please hear me out. Because uh, there actually are a lot of right and wrong ways to do it. And uh, surprisingly, there's actually an awful lot of people that do it wrong. So I thought I'd talk about it. It seems like such a simple thing like, I mean, Hey, how hard can it be to pet a horse, really? Well, let's talk about it. See, first off, you don't pet a horse. You rub it. Because the striking action, or the, you know, bring your hand down in a pat. Uh, that's like a striking action to a horse. That's like hitting. Uh, if the horse has any history of abuse, that's going to cause problems. Uh, and the only thing in their life, naturally, that is anything even close to that is being kicked by another horse. Not a good thing. So, uh, petting? No, we rub them. Because that is like hitting them. And, you know, there, there's absolutely nothing positive, nothing reinforcing, nothing comforting in that. It's all negative, there's nothing positive, so don't do that. And uh, recently I was uh, reading a blog by a guy that, well, I'm not going to mention his name because I definitely don't endorse the guy, but he was talking about how. Uh, Building a relationship with your horse is, uh, it's really essential to rub on their head a lot, the head and the face. And I do that a lot. You'll see that in my videos. You'll see me, you know, patting on them and, you know, rubbing the head and stuff like that. And, uh, but that doesn't come from the start, you know. And, uh, although, you know, like I said, I do that, so I'm not going to say, don't do it. But let's back up, because he doesn't talk about where you start, and you know, he only talks about that part, and I'm not even convinced that it's actually beneficial to the relationship. Uh, there's another place to start, and it's down here. Uh, there's an area on the shoulder here I refer to as the safe zone, and uh, generally in the shoulder area. And you know, sometimes it can go up the size of the withers, maybe a little bit ahead of the shoulders into the lower neck, maybe just a little behind varies depending on the horse. Every horse is different, just like every human is different. Uh, some people are real touchy-feely, other people uh, it's like, don't touch me. Horses are like that too. So, let's start from the beginning, before I even touch the horse. The way I approach it, I'm going to come up nice and quietly, calmly, and I'm going to stand to the side of the horse sideways. So I'm basically, I'm facing the same direction the horse is facing. I'm parallel to the horse. And then I'm just going to quietly reach out a hand and just set it on the shoulder. This is for a horse you don't know that you haven't had time with and that sort of thing when you first start out. I'm not going to rub them at all. I'm just going to put my hand there. And then I'm going to put it away. And I'm going to walk away. And I'm going to do that quite a few times. And I'm not going to chase the horse around so I can do that either. I'm going to wait till either they come to me or the opportunity presents itself for me to just calmly and quietly walk up to the horse and just put my hand on him. That's it. Just put my hand on it. And then take it away before the horse moves. Okay? Gradually you can turn that into rubbing. And then slowly you can enlarge that area, that safe zone I've talked about. And, you know, gradually get a little higher. Some of them really like a good scratch up near the withers too. And the reason rubbing is a good thing is because that's something that horses associate with positive things. There's nothing negative about rubbing. You know, from the time they're born, first thing mama does is lick them clean. That's a rubbing action. Uh, they nuzzle them, that's a rubbing action. As they get older, they'll do some mutual grooming. And that's like a rubbing action. So rubbing actions are good. And as you build your relationship with your horse, you can move up the neck further and further. You don't go for the head yet, no way. And uh, on the subject of the head and the face, um, you know, guys like Tom Dorrance and well, quite a few other good horsemen, you know, they always say, consider things from the horse's perspective, you know. Put yourself in their shoes. Would you want somebody to run up to you and start messing with your face or rubbing your head or grab your head and pull it in and start giving you basically noogies? Uh, no. If somebody tried that with me, I'd probably be pretty annoyed with them, you know. Uh, if it was somebody that I had a very good relationship with, uh, possibly a rather intimate one, uh, if they were to come up to me and gently stroke me on the face, you know, I might actually enjoy it. But, uh, you know, like I said, you know, some people think that 
rubbing on the head and face is uh, beneficial to the relationship. I think it's actually more of an indication of the relationship, whether or not the horse even seems to enjoy it or like it uh, or allow it. You know, that's far more of an indication of where you are with the horse. If it trusts you enough to allow you to, you know, touch its face, uh, you're probably doing okay. But if you have to hang on to the lead to do it or wrap your arm around the head and pull it towards you, no, you're probably not there and you probably shouldn't even be bothered trying to. Now, uh, I rub on the head and face for a number of different reasons. Most of the time it's actually because I enjoy it. It's not so much for the horse. Uh, if it's for the horse, I'm down here. You know, I'm rubbing on the neck. Tell her she's a good girl. You know, that, that's what I'm doing. Because, uh, you know, the head and the face, that's, that's a little more sensitive. And that, you know, I enjoy it. And uh, I do it for different reasons. Like I said, uh, you know, particularly horses that are head shy, that sort of thing. You know, I do it so that they get used to it. You know, not because it accomplishes any more than that. But like I said, it's probably far more of an indicator of the state of your relationship with your horse than something that's going to be beneficial to the relationship with the horse. Now, you know, it's only got two in here today. And if you can hear in the background, it's actually raining pretty hard outside. Uh, by the time I got these two in, it was pouring pretty good. And I was not about to go out and get soaked any worse than I already was trying to get the third one. So we only got two today. But anyhow, uh, how, how you approach the horse, how you touch it, how you rub it, not pat, and uh, work your way up to the face gradually. You know, And this may take days, weeks, months, even years. You know, depending on the horse before you get to that place and uh, if you ever notice uh, I'm always quite gentle on the face and the head you know I don't come in fast and hard uh, I usually go with the grain and that sort of thing so because instinctually uh, their face and head is a very sensitive area uh, by instinct they want to protect it so for them to pull away from you that's really not unusual at all you know it takes time before you get to the point where you can do this it doesn't happen overnight like i said i'm not convinced at all that it's beneficial um, i'm not against it i do it a lot i like to do it but i think more than anything it probably is an indicator of your relationship with your horse but not something not a place to start uh, like i say you start down on the safe zone work your way up and uh, if it's a new horse uh, you're just starting off with don't even so much as rub it just put your hand on it you know then slowly start rubbing it and then each time you do it maybe go a little bit further out and gradually work your way up the neck the face comes later so anyhow how to pet a horse it's that's a quick version of it uh, don't just run up and slap at one uh, when i first got this girl seven eight years ago uh, I didn't know that much back then. I've learned an awful lot since then. And I used to pet her. And I'd walk up to her, I'd give her a slap on the shoulder, and she'd jump 10 feet sideways. Uh, now she tolerates it. But I don't think she gets anything out of it positive. I don't think it does any good for her. It's just that uh, our, after a couple of years of doing that, our relationship had built enough that she tolerated it. She knew me well enough. I wasn't gonna do her any harm when I do that. So, but even now, I just noticed just now, uh, well, they're a little nervous because of the storm going on. Uh, but when I just did that uh, for the film, she actually flinched. Uh, that's kind of unusual for her. She, but that's something I just basically avoid doing altogether. Uh, I don't pet them anymore. I just rub them. I give them lots of rubbing. And like I said, uh, the face, uh, does it hurt? Mm, well, if you did it too soon, uh, yeah, probably could be detrimental. But uh, if you got a pretty good relationship with your horse as it is, uh, I think it's probably okay. Um, but, you know, use your judgment, uh, pay attention to the horse, listen to the horse, the horse will tell you, you know, it, you know, as usual, you know, no halters or leads on these ones. So if I do that and she doesn't like it, she'll go away. So pay attention to the horse because uh, they'll let you know whether or not it's okay to be doing that stuff. Don't just think you're going to force yourself on the horse to do it and uh, they're going to like it. Uh, if you get like that chances are at best they're going to tolerate it they're not going to like it so petting no no uh you don't pet the horse you rub the horse how you approach it gradually slowly over time uh, yeah there's a lot more to it it's not just a simple thing people think hey how hard can it be to pet a horse no 
A little more to it than you think. Have a good day.